guys, this week we are going to be talking about digital marketing strategy, um, how we come up with different ideas and plan them and engage with our target audiences. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about SEO and the different dynamics that go into that. So this will be a little bit longer of a lecture than normal, but hopefully um, it's information that you can use in the digital age. So when you're thinking about marketing strategy, why is strategy important? Um, there's something to be said about something that is organic, that goes viral, that it makes people want to go out and buy something or experience something, but more likely than not, even if it feels organic, there is a strategy behind it. Um, and strategy really takes into account lots of research, um, time, data, all the different elements that go into looking at target audiences and what they really want to uh, buy and experience. And it takes that and really plans out the best strategy or the best way to engage with them and get them to interact with your business or buy something. So when you are thinking about social media and a campaign or just digital marketing in general, there are five steps that go into it. The first one, identify the strategy and goals. Uh, you have to know what you are going to be selling or talking about, um, and you have to kind of know what you want out of that. Otherwise, you can't make a plan. Your goals should really um, align with your business objectives, um, serve as a destination, meaning that this strategy gets you from point A to point B in sales and marketing. It should establish a measuring stick, meaning that you should be able to measure engagement, um, return on investment, different things like that. And then when you are planning and looking at your strategy, it should vary by platform or by campaign, meaning what you put on TikTok is not what you put on Instagram, what you put on Facebook, what you put on X. Two, identify your target audience. This is a big one. So you have an idea, you have kind of a plan to get started, but who are you trying to um, talk to? Who are you trying to influence? Well, first you need to know who that is. Um, and you need to make sure that you are not only um, identifying who is buying your product or who you want to buy your product, but also um, creating these kind of personas that go with them. Uh, for instance, Stanley, cups. They're huge right now. Uh, you probably have one sitting by your desk. If you um, are a young woman, um, even men, I have one sitting right here. Stanley has always been a camping brand. They have always had um, thermoses um, and drinkware, but it wasn't until um, a few years ago when a popular mommy blogger um, got a hold of one of their tumblers and um, liked it. Stanley reached out to her and it became this phenomenon. And now people are fighting and target over them. So um, even though your target audience may not be initially who you think they are, again, camping, men, hardworking, blue collar people, to now this is like a status symbol, right? And sometimes you have to create that audience in order to sell your product. Uh, in order to um, figure all this out, you need to listen to what people are talking about. Um, what they are thinking, their reviews, uh, then you need to take those numbers and analyze them and then make a to-do list on how you're going to take what they're saying um, and apply it to your campaign. So for example, um, Holiday Inn, which is a well-known uh, hotel brand, has um, three different types of target audiences. They have Amenities Andrew, basically um, is someone who is when say, what can I get out of my stay there? Do they have a pool? Do they have a gym? Do they have like a um, internet cafe? Do they have continental breakfast? Uh, then you have what's called Penny Pitcher Pam. And this is the mom of like five kids who's going on vacation, who's looking for the best deal, right? Best bang for my buck. And then finally you have Loyal Lance and that's somebody who's always going to stay holiday and they're going to build up points. They're going to use it, um, over and over to create this loyalty to the brand so that they can get something back. And for each company or business or whatever, they come up with these different target audiences and how they're going to sell their product to them. Once you have decided on what you're going to be doing in your target audience, you want to look at um, the research and how to strategize that research to better serve you. 
So we look at research um, in a few different ways. One of them is ben benchmarking um, or environmental scanning. And basically you are going to look at what are you doing well so far? Um, who are you targeting? What context do these people post in? And what platform are they on? Um, and then what are they doing on it? Um, how are they responding? Do they click on pictures and video? All those sorts of things. And that will help you to decide how you're going to reach them. Another way that you can do this is look at your social media as a business. And what have you been doing? Is it working? Is it not working? You always want to go through, do an audit, evaluate things that are working for you and that things that aren't so that you can change them or keep them or update them. Um, an audit really gives you a clear purpose for each account. Um, it also allows you to look for fraudulent accounts, which is a huge thing for businesses. Um, and it also allows you to determine what kind of networks you want to use and what platforms you want to use and how you want to use them to engage. Finally, you get to the content development. So, so much goes into the strategy for marketing on digital platforms before you actually get to like the actual content and what it is going to um, look like, what it's going to sound like and how people are gonna view it. So when we are looking at the actual content development, we wanna look at a few different things and that is excitement, education, experience and engagement. So these four E's play a big role in how we um, engage with our target audience. So first off, you wanna excite customers with relevant offers. Um, you know, you want to make sure that your product is something that they want and that it's affordable um, within their means. So some people would say, if we're gonna stick with the Stanley Cup reference, that spending 30 to $40 on a cup is ridiculous. Others would say this is nothing if it keeps their drinks hot and cold all day. Um, you know, then you're gonna have different offers. So they have, you know, like Christmas ones and Valentine's Day cups and different things um, to keep it relevant um, and to keep it in mainstream media. You also wanna educate them about the offering. What does the product serve for them? Um, what uh, amenities does it have? What um, kind of details does it have? How is it going to help better their life in some way? When you educate, you wanna make sure that you have a clear call to action, meaning that your product is telling them that it can keep their drinks cold, um, that you know if they go stay at a Holiday Inn, they're going to get the best night's rest while they're on vacation, different things like that. And so your clear call to action is really what the customer is going to get. With that, you wanna make sure that you are developing um, some kind of competitive advantage, right? With Stanley, now there are a million different types of cups out there that are just like it. So what about this particular cup is making it um, better? Um, and the same goes for its um, competitors, right? Brewmate and Hydrojug and uh, Simply Modern all say, well, ours are the same. They still fit in your cup holder. It still keeps your drink cold, but ours doesn't leak, right? So there's a clear call to action and there's this competitive advantage to it. Then you wanna help them experience this product, um, whether direct or indirectly. And with influencer marketing, um, you can do either, right? Um, you can have people test out your product, you can have them just using it in their video, all sorts of different things, but you wanna have them see the product in some form or fashion. Uh, this also means that you wanna demonstrate how it works, how to use it, and where you can go and get it. If they don't have this information, they can't go out and get your product or your experience. Finally, you wanna give them an opportunity to engage with their social network. Meaning if I just bought the newest Stanley Cup, I'm going to post it on Instagram. I'm going to share it on TikTok. Um, that way they can engage with others that they are involved in and also probably in the same target audience and then educate, influence, um, all those things to them. With engagement comes action, meaning that you are showing the product, you are engaging with it, you are explaining it to others. There's also this idea that there's a relationship that can be established. So um, if you become very loyal to a brand, you are um, 
engaging in a relationship. Uh, one of the biggest ones that you see is like Android users versus iPhone users. Um, they are set in their way and that's what they're going to do because they have engaged in a relationship with that product and that um, business and that's what they like. That also leads to possibly loyalty and commitment. Again, Android users are gonna usually stay with Android, iPhone users are gonna die and iPhone users. So engagement really helps with that um, loyal customer idea. Once you have all of this, you wanna look at um, a calendar and how you're going to roll out the strategy. Um, it helps you with scheduling, planning, of course, um, also with your monetary value of like where you're spending the money. Um, it allows you to post at optimal times um, and make sure that your content is lining with your goals, right? So if you have a Christmas campaign, you don't want to roll it out in um, February. That doesn't make sense. Uh, some people would even say October is too early to like establish that or November. So you have to kind of be aware of uh, what your target audience wants, what they think, and um, how it's going to influence them. When you are creating content, you kind of want to think about this 80-20 rule, meaning that 80% um, of your posts should inform, educate, entertain um, your audience, and 20% should be about promoting your brand. So nothing will wear out an audience faster than some, some brand that's just constantly like, you know, this is who we are, this is who we are, you need to come visit us, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I could think of like Timu from the Super Bowl. It was just constant, the same commercial like five times and um, it didn't really like entertain, it didn't educate, it was just there. It, I guess it did educate, it told us how to say the, the, the brand name, but you get the idea. When you are creating content, there is this idea of rule of thirds that you wanna um, think about. Um, you wanna split your campaigning into three categories. One, promotes business and generates profit. Um, shares ideas and stories through leadership or um, through influencers, and then promotes personal interactions with the audience. And that's where influencers or influencing through social media comes in as well. Then finally, you wanna monitor and change. Then this goes back to the research element. What is working and what do you need to um, change or adapt? So when you're evaluating and measuring your ROI, which is your return on investment, um, you want to make sure that you're seeing an increase, not a decrease. Um, you can also do A and B testing, meaning you send out one ad to this area and another in, another in a different area, and how did they compete against each other? And of course, you can use tools to track and measure this kind of success um, and research and data to really help you decide what's working and what isn't. So here we go, we have engagement, which leads to feeling connected, which also leads to information. You wanna make sure that all of this is dynamic in some way. Um, it builds a network, that it is timely, meaning uh, it, again, is being put out at the right time and makes sense to your consumers. Um, and with all of that, uh, it comes persuasion and message appeals. So. We've gone through the strategy, we've gone through the research, now the message appeal itself. What kind of persuasion or message appeal is going to work best for your product? Um, so there's a few different types of appeals. The first one is called a functional appeal. And basically this just shows the prod product off. It shows what it physically can do. Um, here is an example. Hi, Phil Swift here for Flex Tape the super strong waterproof tape that can instantly patch, bond, seal, and repair. Flex Tape is no ordinary tape. Its triple thick adhesive virtually welds itself to the surface, instantly stopping the toughest leaks. Leaky pipes can cause major damage, but Flex Tape grips on tight and bonds instantly. Plus, Flex Tape... So you get that idea. The functional pill is basically just showing the product, how it functions, what it can do. Uh, infomercials are the most apparent at this, right? They're showing you how it's going to change your life. Um, but there's also functional pills for athletic um, apparel, different things, cars, all those kinds of things. Then you have emotional pill, and this can be through lots of different emotions. Um, you have love, you have humor, 
Um, sex is a huge appeal, of course, fear, guilt, pride and honor or sadness. Um, the thing about emotional appeal is that you are really trying to hit, um, your target audience in the feels, haha. Um, but in a certain way to make your product, um, be associated with that feeling. So for instance, here's an example. Welcome home, buddy. You and me, we were made for love. A lifetime is not long enough to show you what you mean to me. See you later, buddy. I shouldn't drive home last night. I stayed a day. Ooh, when you come home. I'm back. I'm back. To me. Yeah, I'm back. So it that kind of emotional pill, right? They are selling beer. And Budweiser's always really great at that because they um usually use some kind of like animal or dog or whatever, and they usually have a humor appeal and a um sad or emotional appeal, um, to really connect with you. Um, and they, you know, they were selling their product and they're also telling you to drink responsibly. Right. Um, so, uh, then you have the experimental appeal or expert. Then you have the exper a wrench experiential appeal. Oh my gosh. Then you have the experiential appeal. Um, this appeals to our desire to test this appeals to our desire to touch, taste, smell, hear, see, um, and have really um, a person-to-person -person kind of contact. So are we getting um, free samples? Are we going to YouTube and looking at reviews? Are we um, trying to, you know, look at this in a virtual reality setting? Like, is the furniture going to look good in my house? Those kinds of things. Um, and is there an in-person event where I can go try? Last, you have resonance appeal. And this is where um, humor can usually play in this, um, but so can other emotions. But it's the use of metaphors, puns, or wordplay in combination with an illustration or a picture to create a double meaning. Um, so you have the um, good idea, beer, light bulb idea, um, but you also have um, the insurance commercial um, where trouble um, disaster is going through and he has all these scenarios, right? That he creates problems for um, the person and the insurance comes in and saves them. So when do you use which appeal? Well, there is a um, message appeal or elaboration likelihood model. Basically, you're gonna take the motivation, the ability, the opportunity, um, kind of elaborate on all of those things and how it works with your product. And then you have two options. You can go the central processing route, which is high, meaning that your consumers have to really think about the product and what they can use it for. And then you have the peripheral route, which means it's um, kind of instantaneous or impromptu. Um, you didn't really think you were gonna buy those kinds of things, but you did anyways, cause you were influenced. With um, the message appeal, you have the ELM. Um, and this is just basically, is it functional or is it emotional? And how is that um, engaging with your mind? So um, with this, uh, you have functional, which is promoting the product. It's utilitarian. It's high involvement. Um, you have to critically think about it. And then emotional is when the product is um, value expressive. There's low involvement in thinking about it. You just want it. Along with that, you have principles of persuasion. Um, different things go into persuading your target audience. So um, you have the consensus. Basically, um, you were influenced by what other people are doing. TikTok is great about this, right? Because you're seeing people on your For You page, um, people talking about TikTok shop and what they're buying, what they're using it for. Uh, basically, you're just being peer pressured into getting um, involved in an experience or buying something. 
Then you have consistency, meaning that um, you feel obligated to buy things or um, engage with a product because of the commitment you have. Um, if you have a birthday, you have Christmas, Valentine's Day, those kinds of things. You have liking, um, meaning that uh, we prefer as humans to say yes. Um, we know what we like. Uh, we follow things that we like and we want to keep following and buying those things that we like. Um, so that is a persuasion technique. Then you have reciprocity. So we feel obligated to give back to those who've given to us. Um, this is what a lot of charities um, use, meaning, you know, like um, St. Jude's, you know, these kids deserve the chance of life that you've got. So why don't you donate to us or the humane society? Like, oh, we show you these sad animals. How can you give back um, to those kinds of things? You have authority, meaning that there are experts that are telling you this is a good product um, and this is why you should buy it um, or invest your money in this certain um, business. And then you have scarcity, uh, which means that things are more attractive if there are limited values of them. Um, again, with the Stanley Cups, you know, there was only so many Valentine's Day ones. And so they were scarce. People were running to get them. Uh, iPhones do this a lot. Um, shoes, uh, especially like sneaker brands, will only print so many of them out. Um, print will only make so many sneakers. And so um, scarcity really plays a role in that as well. So this gives you kind of an idea of how um, marketing strategy begins, what you do as a consumer, um, what you do as a digital marketing um, professional and how they play with each other.